Wow, you're crazy for this one. Best way to cook Cornish game hen in the microwave. <laughs> Hilarious question. Hello everybody, welcome to Home Movies. This is a very special edition where obviously I am not cooking. I am though answering your questions, specifically your Thanksgiving questions. To be totally honest, I was simply too busy this year to even think about Thanksgiving and was like, that's okay. I feel like we can take the year off. I'm now feeling sad about it because it is my favorite holiday, but you can always rewatch last year's Thanksgiving video, which is really fun and honestly, still to me, kind of a perfect menu. I wanted my perfect Thanksgiving meal and that has like crunchy salads and two pans of stuffing and lumpy mashed potatoes and like a delicious apple tart. Everything sort of revolves around the turkey even though it's notoriously everybody's least favorite thing. So I feel like you really have to go hard on the salads and the sides to compensate for the fact that everybody's eating turkey, which is like womp womp. Here we go, your most popular and funniest Thanksgiving questions answered. Other bird to roast that's not a massive turkey. I only know about the same birds that you do. I know about a chicken, and I know about a duck, and a goose. You think they're asking you about a secret bird? I'm pretty sure I don't know what other bird to roast. Like, honestly, I'm a huge fan um, of turkey legs, and I know that's not another bird. It's just a different part of the bird, but braised turkey legs are fantastic. I love them. I'm actually publishing a recipe for those on my newsletter, which you can find in the link below. Honestly, free yourself from the turkey. We don't need to do turkey all the time. If you don't even like it, then don't do it. If we can sort of reframe this holiday to be less about like turkey and cranberry and stuffing and more about like gratitude and like, being together and eating all day, then you can serve anything you want. Great seafood or vegetarian entrees that still feel festive. I think festivity is a state of mind and for me, if it's seafood, like hands down, try to get your hands on like a salmon or an Arctic char to roast whole. Those two fish are so fatty. If you roast it sort of like at 300, 325 for close to an hour, you're gonna get like beautiful pink, tender, perfectly cooked fish. And it's just like this whole big beautiful fish. And I would serve it with like melted butter and lots of lemon. There is nothing more festive Nothing more impressive. To me, it's like holiday royalty. Ideas for a do-ahead when you're making everything yourself. Well, I always make everything myself and I don't do that much ahead. I will do things like make the stock the night before, I'll tear the bread for the stuffing the night before, prep a vegetable, like take the tails off green beans or cut Brussels sprouts in half or something like that. All those things, what they do is sort of just give you peace of mind. It takes the same amount of time whether you do it the night before or the day of. So it just means I start earlier. What about oh yeah, all dessert should be made ahead. Your pies, your galettes, bake it the day before, 100%. How not to dry out the turkey? Well, don't overcook it. People are so afraid of undercooking the turkey that they cook the hell out of it. People see juices and they think it's undercooked, but turkey should be juicy. I think that if you find a thermopen, which is to me the most accurate, best thermometer, I've had one for years. For me, it is the best and most foolproof way to make sure that your turkey is cooked through. It's a, it's a big bird. The breast will always be drier than the thigh and the leg, and that's just a thing that we have to accept. From tie me up to tuck me in, what? Spice up your me time? I'm blushing. We interrupt this episode of Home Movies to give a special thank you to our sponsor, Dipsy. Dipsy is a sexual wellness audio erotica platform. If you are watching this and you're like, what is audio erotica? Or how can I sort of link in my sexual wellness with my mental health and my physical well being? and like better sleep and just like taking care of yourself, then I feel like Dipsy is something that you might wanna explore. This is sort of like a very safe space to explore those urges and that curiosity in the privacy of your own room without shame or feeling weird about it or unsafe. They're constantly updating with new stories. So if you give it a shot, you listen to something and you're like, I don't know if that's for me. Like, rest assured, you will find something that's for you. And for all you Home Movies fans, if you go to dipsystories.com slash Allison, you get a 30-day free trial. It's dipsy, D-I-P-S-E-A, stories.com slash Allison. It's a really special thing that they're trying to do to, like, make sure that women's bodies feel, like, holistically taken care of from, you know, up here to here to here to everywhere. And I support it. I doubt it's your vibe, but a better green bean casserole, question mark? 
Option to be gluten-free as well, question mark. The word casserole is not my vibe. I don't know why. Last year we did green beans and mushrooms like roasted on a sheet pan with onions. And that to me was like a huge hit. It approximated green bean casserole. It doesn't have like the creamy sauciness, but that's sort of by design if you ask me. And it happens to be gluten-free because I use tamari instead of soy sauce. I don't like cranberry sauce, but every year I give it a try anyway. <laughs> do you have a favorite recipe? I do the same thing. Cranberry sauce is like never my favorite thing. To me, the best cranberry sauce is cranberries and sugar. You cook half the cranberries with the sugar till they pop, till they're juicy, till they're jammy. You add the other half of the cranberries and you cook them until they're just popped, meaning they're not quite as cooked, they're not broken down as much, they're still a little fresh tasting. You remove it from heat and maybe you squeeze in a little orange juice or lemon juice, but that's it. When in doubt, make something really good in the most simple way. How do I stop my turkey from charring so much in the oven? The best trick I think that I know is to tent the bird with foil. And this also works with things like pies. If you notice your pie getting a little dark, you can always protect it from browning by placing a little foil over it. You'd literally just take a sheet of foil and like rest it over the breast or like the wing tips. Good vegan vegetarian main dishes. I'm tired of getting only sides. I hope that you don't think that as a meat eater, we're like, turkey time! Like, thank God it's the turkey time! Like, we don't want that either. We're really there for the sides as well. So I hear you though, because it's like the main centerpiece and you're like, thanks for the yams. I would say that like a beautiful vegetable lasagna, or not even vegetable lasagna, just like a meatless lasagna for like a vegetarian main is a good idea. Bake it in like a cool, like round cake pan, like almost like a timbale or something. That would be dope. I'd be happy with that. I'm camping with my family for Thanksgiving, ideal side dish. Interestingly, a lot of questions along this vein this year. There's camping, there's road trip, there's Airbnb. It's like, trend alert, people are not staying home for Thanksgiving this year. For me, the ideal side dish for something like that is like a green bean or a Brussels sprouts or like the vegetable side that you would typically roast because any vegetable that you are gonna roast hot and fast in the oven can be done in a cast iron skillet over a fire or a flame. I wouldn't do mashed potatoes, but I would do like cut up sweet potatoes or squash peeled in a Dutch oven covered with like a little bit of water, salt, pepper, maybe some butter, maybe some honey or maple syrup, and then put the lid on and kind of let it steam and cook and soften and then crush it with a wooden spoon or something. And that's a really easy and bare bones way to make like a delicious sort of sweet starchy side. This is a good question actually. How to chip in when you're going to someone's house for Thanksgiving. I think that offering to contribute in any way you can, be it financially or bringing wine or offering to clean, taking the trash out is always welcome. I think that most people understand when you are inviting them over, especially for a holiday, there's no reciprocation required financially. But that said, depending on your relationship with this person and what their situation is, I think that it's so case by case, but like if you're on the fence, like offering to say like, how can I contribute? Can I do it financially? Can I bring something? Erring on the side of offering. Oh, flowers are great. I love flowers. Sorry, I'm, there are so many questions. Best canned gravy? Don't. Thoughts on wine? I love it. Would love dessert ideas from the new book. Any teasers? Wish it was out sooner. I will be dropping something for Thanksgiving. Stay tuned, it will be this week. What book is it? It's called Sweet Enough. It's out March 28th, 2023. It is available for pre-order right now, yeah. So go pre-order it. Yeah, go, why not? It'll be like a gift for your future self. Not really doing Turkey Day this year, family drama. Ideas for solo recipes. That bums me out, but hopefully you find someone to celebrate with. But even if not, honestly, oftentimes I'm only really able to reflect on the things that I'm grateful for when I am alone. Being alone on a day where you're supposed to be with other people can actually be very restorative because there's no pressure to perform or find the right outfit or find the right side dish or find the right, like the traffic and the thing. It's like, you're like, you know what? I don't have to do anything today. So make whatever's gonna make you feel happiest for yourself. I think like a whole pan of stuff. Yeah, I would probably eat stuffing. That's what I would make. How long does it actually take to thaw frozen turkey in the fridge? It takes like two full days. You could also err on the side of three, but it takes a long ass time. Is it worth making homemade rolls? If yes, what recipe? If no, where should I buy them? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna rework and pop, like figure out my my grandfather always used to make dilly bread. It was like basically a really soft white bread with lots of dill seeds in it. He would bake it in loaves and we would 
eat leftovers on the bread afterwards. So I guess you could say my love of dill has always been present, but I made a version that were like little tiny rolls, but I'm gonna revisit that and see if I can republish it this week. Canned pumpkin or do it yourself, always canned. Libby's is a perfect product. It's up there with Heinz ketchup and Philadelphia cream cheese of things that simply can't and should not be improved upon. They're excellent. How to deal with wine snobs at Thanksgiving. Tell them to put up or shut up. Tell them to bring their own wine or get out of your house. Tell them that life is too short to be snobby about anything. Dealing with any sort of like snobbery at Thanksgiving is just simply not tolerated. That's not why we're there. I personally don't tolerate it. Those are not the people that I invite into my home, but maybe sometimes you don't have a choice. I think you say like, you feel passionately about wine. I invite you to bring the wine for Thanksgiving this year. Like put it on them. Hey. Oh, it's time for your cameo. I'm grateful for you. We never planned this. No, we don't. She just, she never comes out. Hey. I really am so grateful for you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. A lot of cornbread questions. I have a great cornbread recipe that is very crunchy on the outside, very delicious and tender on the inside. It will be in my newsletter as well. It's like impossibly delicious. Yes, there's a little bit of sugar in there. And a secret ingredient in that cornbread is a little mayonnaise, which people get really freaked out oh. by. Mayonnaise is oil and eggs, two ingredients normally found in cornbread. What's the freak out for? Can I do the anchovy butter chicken as an anchovy butter turkey? Yes, and a lot of people do that. I am a huge fan of like a very simple turkey seasoning, like salt, pepper, maybe some fennel, maybe some chili, maybe a little brown sugar, something like that. I prefer like my boldness to come with my vegetables. But if you're like, I want my turkey to be very boldly flavored, then I think that that's a really good option. For those of you who have not had it, it's not super crazy anchovy-y. It's more like garlicky and sort of meaty and salty. And a lot of people have used it in the past for their turkeys and have rave reviews. A lot of appetizer questions. I'm on the hunt for appetizers that won't ruin appetites, but aren't basic or boring. Any advice? To me, a really good appetizer is a small appetizer. It's tiny, it's not involved, there's no assembly required, it's not meaty, and it's not just nuts, right? So for me, my ideal Thanksgiving spread situation is like vegetables with a delicious dip. Honestly, like caviar and potato chips with sour cream. Olives, marinated or not, who cares? Pickles are a really good idea. Like you want something like punchy and acidic and salty and delicious and like preferably with a little texture. Pigs in a blanket to me are gonna ruin your day. They're gonna ruin the appetite. You're gonna be stressing about the oven. Nothing that gets baked. <laughs> I like the way that this question is asked. Favorite twist on a side for unadventurous family who still want to be hip. I think like the additive of like one surprise ingredient here and there, like if you're like, this turkey's rubbed with anchovy butter, that's like, you know, round of applause. Yay! Adding like a dash of fish sauce to your green bean casserole. You know, stuff like that where you're like, I didn't use regular oranges, I used blood oranges. Like there's things that you can do that are like minimal upgrades that sort of show the world that you are hip, but still unadventurous. Are mashed potatoes good? Question mark, I can't decide. Obviously they're good, but when they're made poorly, they're really bad. Like they need a lot of butter, a lot of salt, and a lot of heavy cream to, for me to like warrant their appearance. Okay, so that is it for our Thanksgiving hotline this year. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please check out the newsletter this week, which is sort of uh, the pre-Thanksgiving. There's recipes, new ones, old ones timelines, more advice. So if I didn't get to your question, check that out. You can subscribe on my website, allisoneroman.com. But if you have specific questions about like turkey, gravy, stuffing, green beans, mashed potatoes, there are videos and recipes that exist out there already that I implore you to check out because chances are I have addressed your fears and hopefully giving you the confidence to host your own Thanksgiving or at least bring a side dish to the one that you're attending. Becoming a worse cook by the hour. I've made some trash lately. Sad. Worried for the turkey. <laughs> <laughs>